Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I've got a full tutorial on how to use assistive touch with your iPhone, iPad or iPod touch. Now for those of you who don't know what assistive touch is, it's basically a set of hidden features that you can use to make things a little bit easier if you struggle with some of the gestures with the iPhone or if you have features that are broken. For example, if you have a broken home button or a broken lock button, you can set up a digital button to do these things for you. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about assistive touch and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment box down below. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is open up our settings application here and we're going to scroll down to where it says general and then we're going to tap on accessibility. Now from here we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and basically we're going to see assistive touch right here. It's set to off by default. We'll open that up and we'll tap up here to enable it and now assistive touch is on and this is where we're going to access all our assistive touch features and abilities. So once you exit out of your app, you'll notice that you have this little button that you can move around your screen. And a lot of people use this as a digital home button or a digital lock button. And that's because these tend to break sometimes on iPhones. And the way that's set up is pretty simple. So for example, if the home button was broken, you could have this digital button here and you can see you can access home right here and it'll take you home. So if I was inside an application, we'll just open up the Shazam app and we tap on that digital button and then we tap on home, it'll take you back to your home screen. Now, if your lock button is broken, you tap on this, then you tap on device, and you'll notice that we have a few settings here, one of them being lock screen. So if we tap on that, we've now locked the screen. Now to wake up your phone, you would use one of the two buttons that's not broken. If both buttons are broken, you're stuck at this point, so don't use this tip if that's the case but if your home button's broken use your lock button to wake it up if your lock button is broken use your home button to wake it up and again if you tap on that you can access some of these features you won't be able to access anything you couldn't do normally so you would have to unlock your phone to access everything else now let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the settings built into assistive touch so first off we'll take a look at notification center and just by tapping on it it'll bring up the notification center so you can access and check on your notifications beside that is a device section and that has more settings which we'll go through in just a little bit below that we have our control center very simple brings up our control center for us then we have the home button which i showed you can be a digital home button we have Siri, which if you tap on that, accesses Siri and brings it up. We also have a section called Favorites, and this one here is really interesting because it creates digital gestures for you. For example, Pinch is set up by default. So if we go ahead and open up Safari here and we're on a website and we tap on our favorites and we tap on that pinch gesture, you'll notice we have these two little gesture buttons here. Now what you would do with the pinch is basically it's giving you that zoom and unzoom feature without having to use that two finger zoom like so. So if you do have trouble with that or if you just wanna use that, that's there for you. And you can create your own gestures here, which I went ahead and created a scroll gesture. I'll show you how to create them in just a second. We'll take a look at that scroll gesture. You can see we just have the one dot now. And this basically is going to be a scroll. So if I tap on it, it's gonna scroll. If I tap on it again, it's gonna to continue to scroll. Now how you actually create these is very simple as well. Back into our settings application, down to general, and then accessibility, and then back down to assistive touch here, we have this section where we can create new gestures. So if we tap on that, we can set up any gesture we want. Now I went ahead and set up the scroll down feature, so now I'm gonna go ahead and create a scroll up feature. So how that works is you simply pull down and that'll allow it to scroll up now. If you wanna create anything you want, you can, you can be as creative as you want, but just for this example, we'll go ahead and use that. And then we'll go ahead and tap save here. We'll call it scroll up, tap save. And now it's created and you can see all your custom gestures that are available right here. So let's go back into Safari here. And now if we tap on our digital buttons here and we tap favorites, we have scroll and scroll up. So I'll tap scroll up now. And if we tap on that button here, you'll see now it's scrolling back up to the top. So as I said, you can be as creative as you want with this and you have up to this many slots to put them in. One more thing, you have a back button in the middle with this arrow. You can tap on that, it'll always take you back. 
Now let's take a look at the device section here. So if we tap on that, we're brought up with more settings. As you can see, we have the lock screen setting, which I showed you earlier, will lock your screen. We have the rotate screen section here. So again, if I go into Safari, we tap on our digital button, tap devices, tap rotate. We can choose to rotate the screen upside down, right, left, whatever you'd like, and back to portrait mode. So you can set that up and do that if you want. We have our volume up, so you can see if we tap on that, it puts the volume up. We have the volume down. We can just tap on that to bring it down. Then we've got mute. And finally, we have a more section here. And in this section, there's a few other features. First off, taking a screenshot. So rather than holding the home button and the power button at the same time to take a screenshot, you can now just tap on screenshot, which might be a little bit easier for a lot of people. So there's the screenshot. Next, we have multitasking, and this simply brings up our multitask. So if we tap on that, you can access your different applications using the multitask tab. We'll go back into it again. Next, we have shake. Now, shake isn't really a huge feature. It's not used very much, but for example, there is an ability with the shake. So if I go ahead and type up there, if we just type a whole bunch of stuff, if we tap here, we go back to devices, and we go into more and tap shake, it's going to give us this. Now, if you didn't know, anytime you make a mistake typing or anything and you wanna undo it, if you just shake your iPhone, it brings up undo typing. So we'll go back into our assistive touch settings, we'll tap on device, we'll tap on more, and you'll notice we have a gestures tab up top. Now I'm gonna go into this with my iPad, and I'll quickly show you how this works. So if we tap on it here, you'll see that we have four gestures, a two finger, three finger, four finger, and five finger gesture. So the way this works, we'll use the four finger gesture just as an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the score app here on my iPad. Now four finger gestures with the iPad allows you to switch between applications. So if you have multiple applications open and you use four fingers, you can swipe between them. So if we open up the assistive touch, we go into devices, more, and then the gestures section, if we tap on that four, it now puts up four dots and that's representing four finger touches on the screen. So now we could just take one finger and we could just swipe across and we can use it as a four finger gesture. Now this I don't find to be very useful. Some of these you probably notice aren't as useful as you would think, but if this is something you'd like to use, it's there and I'm sure that in some cases, especially if people have difficulty using these, it'll be very useful for them. So that's pretty much how you use assistive touch. If you have any questions or need some help, feel free to ask in the comments down below or follow me on Twitter and send me a message there. I respond quicker on Twitter just because the comment setup is a little bit better. Also, if you guys found this video useful or helpful, share it on social media, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you use, as it'll help other people as well. If you guys want more videos like this one, there's a link in the description down below. You can also subscribe to be notified when I post new videos and also hit that like button. Let me know you liked the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.